Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to use NoteFlight to open a MIDI file and an XML file so you can quickly load scores into the computer for use with your students. The song that I'd like to work with is a well-known four-voice chorale known as Abide With Me. It is usually sung to the Eventide tune by William Monk who wrote it in 1861. We're going to open it first as a MIDI file so you can see how to quickly create a piano score. Then we're going to open it as an XML file so you can see how to quickly find materials for SATB and choral ensembles. Finally, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily transpose so that you can change the key of the piece if you wish, or so you can quickly hand out parts for various instruments in the correct keys. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to switch to the internet browser on my computer and do a Google search for Abide With Me MIDI, M-I-D-I. The very first link that comes up is the one I'm looking for. I navigate to the page, right-click the link to the MIDI file, and choose Download. While I'm on the page, I also right-click the link to the XML file and choose Download. We'll talk more about those two formats in a minute. Now that those two are downloaded, I'm going to switch to Chrome and run NoteFlight. NoteFlight is optimized for Chrome and may have some additional features depending on your version when running in Chrome. Now let's create a piano version of Abide With Me from the MIDI file. I'll click on NoteFlight's Home button, then on its Plus or Create button. In the dialog that appears, I'll choose Start by importing MIDI or XML at the bottom of the screen and navigate to my downloads folder where my MIDI file was saved. I will set the import options as desired and click import. Voila! There's a piano arrangement of the chorale abide with me. Now MIDI files contain information about specific notes and when they are to be played but they do not contain information about how they are to be notated. NoteFlight did a fairly amazing job of interpreting that data but if you look closely you'll see that there are a few errors that would need to be corrected before you give this to a real piano player. If you look at this one measure you'll see notes such as this E flat and this D that are not usually written together. The intention was probably for the tenor to do quarter notes walking down while the bass sustained an E flat. We could easily correct this using the tools on NoteFlight, but let's look instead at loading an XML file into NoteFlight. So I'm going to navigate again to my home button in the upper left hand corner of NoteFlight. I'm going to click on the plus or create button and this time I'm going to open the XML version. Now the improvement that is found in this particular file is quite amazing. You'll notice if we look at that one measure that it actually interpreted it correctly and XML just simply has more information about the notes and how they are to be notated saved in the file. If you ever have a choice and have to select between MIDI or XML everything else being equal you'll want to choose the XML files. Okay let's look now at quickly transposing this song. Let's say you wanted to sing this in the key of D instead of E so your young string players could accompany the choir. Navigate to the menu, choose pitch, then transpose. Click down, then type in 2, and select minor second. Be certain to turn on the checkbox that says change the key signature also. When you're done, click OK and the piece is immediately transposed. You could give this to the string students and to your choir in the same key and only the violas would have trouble. Of course you can always change the clef of the treble voices or bass voices to alto and then you have a version for the violas as well. Okay, I'm going to undo that and we're back in E flat. Let's say we wanted to keep it in that key because we're going to ask young brass or woodwind students to play with us. The key of E flat is a more friendly key for them. We'll print this version for our choir and we'll create another version in the key of F for our trumpets and clarinets. For this, we're going to use a different transposition process altogether. NoteFlight knows the transposition of the various instruments, so we'll let it do the heavy lifting this time. We'll click on the instrument button in the score, looks like a guitar, and tell the computer that we are playing the bass and treble clefs 
with a B-flat instrument such as trumpet. This will do the transposition correctly for all B-flat instruments with only a few possible range issues to consider. We may need to take the voices up or down an octave for tenor sax or for bass clarinet or for euphonium treble clef. So some of you are asking yourself, why didn't we just use the original transposition process? The original process changes the actual key of the song, which means that when you press play, it plays in the new key. We want students to potentially practice with this version, so they would play it in concert E flat, but read their transposing parts. This second process permits students to play along with the song with their parts in the correct key and with their sound matching what is playing. Okay, I'm going to undo that again, and we're back in E flat. Let's say we now wanted to print parts for the E-flat instruments such as alto sax and clarinet and berry sax. We'll repeat the same process but select any E-flat instrument for both staves. Once again we may have to consider octave transposition for some instruments. What's good for the E-flat alto sax may not be great for the E-flat alto clarinet for example. Finally, we may want to create a part for the horns, English horns and French horns. To do that, we'll undo to get back to E flat again, and this time we will change to a horn in F. We'll have to customize the transposition in some versions of note flight so that it will be playable. Okay, there will be two last steps that I'd like you to take. I'd like you to open the XML file for Abide With Me in note flight or any notation program of your choosing and share the score in the key of E flat so that you can provide a copy to your choral students and second to share a copy in the key of F that would be appropriate for trumpets, clarinets, and tenor saxes, bass clarinet players and so on. The easiest way to do this is to export a PDF version for your students and then upload them to your class's learning management system or send those files to them in an email. A second way is to share these on NoteFlight. The advantage of this approach is that students can play along with the piece online for practice. So let me take you through the process for doing that. You click on the score settings button, you click on sharing, you select everyone, you click on the next button, and you indicate that this is not an original song, it's an arrangement of an existing song. You indicate the name of the song, and you indicate that it is a public domain song. Once done, you tell it OK, and you click on the little share the link button, you've seen it on YouTube as well as on NoteFlight, and choose copy link. This is the file that you can share with others and integrate into your web pages or learning management systems and they will be able to load a NoteFlight file in their browser, on their phone, on any tablet device, Android or Apple, and they'll be able to play along with the piece. So, where can you find XML and MIDI files to load into your notation programs? They are literally all over the internet. Any Google search will provide lots of choices. Be forewarned, however, not all notation and MIDI files are as good as the ones that you've been looking at today. So you may find a few that aren't appropriate before you find those that do. Be persistent and keep looking. You'll be amazed at what you can find. Uh, one last thing I should mention, you should search NoteFlight public scores for things that you're looking for because it may be that someone has already created something that you would like to use. You should also search MuseScore, the MuseScore site, M-U-S-E-S-C-O-R-E, -E, and check out their XML files because they also have a tremendous collection of materials that are already prepared and may not need any adjustments on your part for you to be able to use them. Okay, I look forward to seeing your work. Thank you very much. Goodbye.